Hey everybody, this is Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. I'm the author of The Snowball System, trainer to over 15,000 experts all over the world on sound, authentic business development techniques. And I have just had a blast recording a series of questions and answers and interview of Osan Veral, who's author of Think Like a Rocket Scientist. It is so fun to combine his thinking about thinking with business development. It's just totally a tangential way of thinking about things. And his advice to us has been fantastic on our first three episodes. In this fourth episode, my last one with him before I do a recap of everything I learned next, in this fourth episode, I'm gonna dig deep into habits. And what Osan shares with me is completely different than what I thought he would say. I mean, he, he he threw me back in my chair on this one. So you gotta listen to that to hear the answer. But I'm gonna ask him, how can we hack our own habits? How can we be more efficient? How can we focus on the long-term relationship building when all the delivery work is clamoring for our attention? And I'm telling you, what he told me to do, I, I don't wanna reveal it yet, but it was completely different than what I expected and it was solid, really good stuff. So before we get to that, hey, don't forget, if you want our best thinking when it comes to growing your book of business, growing your relationships, and growing your career, head over to growbigplaybook.com. That's where you can sign up for our Grow Big Playbook, which is our weekly newsletter on our best advice, tips, super concise, packs a punch on how you can improve your business development skills and do those big three things. Grow your book of business, grow your relationship, and grow your career. So here's Ozan throwing me back in my chair when I thought I asked a simple question, but I got a really counter counterintuitive and oddly practical answer. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's Mo Bunnell. I'm here with you. I'm your host at Real Relationships, Real Revenue, and I'm with Osan Viral. He's author of Think Like a Rocket Scientist. We are having a blast mashing up the snowball system with his book and trying to think of different ways so that you can improve your business development skills and in effect, grow your book of business grow your relationship, and grow your career. And it's that grow your career part that we're here now. We've had a couple great episodes. If you haven't watched those, go back and watch them or listen. But what we've got today is we're gonna get Osan's advice from content and think like a rocket scientist on how we can hack our own habits and stay focused on the long game, our business development skills, growing our book of business and our relationships so that we can be successful over a long period of time. So Asan, when you think about all the great content and think like a rocket scientist, what advice would you give folks to hack their own habits, to stay focused on the external things, not just the doing of the work, but on the creating the ecosystem to create more work? Okay, here's a counterintuitive idea. The best way to grow your business is to do nothing. Now, bear with me, let me explain what I mean by you, that. You threw me back in my chair on that one, so I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> let me explain what I mean by that. So, so many of us are constantly in hustle mode. We are moving from one meeting to the next, one email to the next, one notification to the next, without pausing, reflecting, deliberating, and seeing the bigger picture. Um, which is why, I mean, it's so hard to innovate when you're busy trying to reach inbox zero. Um, so there is so much value to doing nothing. And what I mean by that is scheduling time in your day, in your week, I call this airplane mode. Um, and I put it on my calendar. It's there every day, taking 20 minutes out of my day to sit on my recliner chair with a notepad and a pen and just do nothing but think. I don't approach it with an agenda. I don't approach it with a, you know, an outcome in mind. I just jot down whatever ideas that come to my head. Uh, and by the way, 95% of what comes out is junk. It's unusable, but the 5% is invaluable. Um, some of the best ideas that occurred to me in recent memory came to me while I was just sitting on that chair reflect, reflecting and deliberating. There's a lot of research that backs this up. So we assume that when you're daydreaming, when you're just thinking, your brain is not active, but it's actually quite the opposite. When you're daydreaming, when you let your mind wander, 
a region of the brain called the default mode network comes alive. Uh, and that region is associated with creativity. You're basically allowing your subconscious to connect the dots in your brain, to make associations and make connections that you otherwise would have missed. Um, there are so many stories in Think Like a Rocket Scientist of, of scientists literally walking themselves into the answer. So they'll be wor working with a problem, they'll get stuck, and then they'll walk away from the problem and go for a walk in nature. And the moment they step away from the problem, they're able to let their subconscious make these connections and make associations, and that's when insights emerge. Uh, this could be anything. It could be working out. For Einstein, it was playing the violin. Uh, he, you know, he'd be stuck with a problem. He'd go grab his violin and start playing. And in the middle of a song, he'd say, I've got it. Um, and I'm sure this has happened to you as well. So this is why so many great ideas come to people in the shower. Because when you're showering, you're in this isolated environment, free of distractions. It's just you and your thoughts. And all of these amazing ideas begin to bubble up to the surface. Now imagine if you can take that and actually systematically build it into your day. Uh, and, and I know it sounds like, it sounds on the surface like a waste of time, but you'll find after a while that it's really one of the most valuable things you can do with your time. Oh, I love it. And um, it makes me think, like I, I, it, as I play back the last several months, when I go on a run, yeah. That's. I, I don't know if it's the physical activity. Maybe you've got some research. You, I haven't actually stumbled upon this yet, but it seems like the the motion of running, the fact I actually don't like to run with music. So there's sort mm -hmm. of like the shower. There's you're, you're moving fast enough that I get into like a zone, and I don't have any other distractions. There's no digital device. There's no music. There. It's just the thoughts in my head. And a lot of times my best ideas come from that. So is this the same kind of thing? You're just, you can just do it indoors in a Eames lounge chair. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think the, the key here is to just do what works for you. Uh, it could be like I do in every recliner. It could be as you do, Mo, which is to go for a run. And by the way, I love that you said there is no music. I, I, I think for me, music without words works. So I could go for a walk and run with music without words. What doesn't work for me is like listening to a podcast. Yeah. I mean, the, the moment that I try to be productive and I try to fill that space with like, oh, let me go for a walk and also listen to a podcast or an audiobook when I'm doing it, I'm not letting those ideas that are within me come to the surface because now I'm listening to somebody else's ideas and you're not really letting your subconscious of yourself kick in and generate breakthroughs. Um, so yeah, so it could be anything... As long as you're stepping away from distractions and going in, because there, we are all walking repositories of epiphanies. Uh, I think the, the problem is we're just too distracted to be able to see them. And often creativity comes as a subtle whisper. And if you're not paying attention to it, it's so easy to miss it, which is why, especially in this day and age, it's so important to create space in our lives free of distractions so those amazing insights can bubble up to the surface in a way that you can actually see them and notice them. Yeah, I like this. So I want to double click on this a little bit. You're making me think of lots of things. Practically, I can remember now I created a wordless mix. I'm older than you, but I love the band New Order. And there's all kinds of 12-inch mixes of New Order. Like I could all geek out for days about my favorite albums and things. But I created a playlist that had a bunch of the wordless mixes, 12-inch mixes, and they're super upbeat, they're energizing, and while they, they have some link back to the, the songs that actually had words in them, they're different enough you don't hum them along. And I can remember years ago I would play that over and over and I got out of that habit. So I think I'm going to go back and do that. Back to practicality, though, what's your advice around the timing and a, and a couple things? One is you mentioned 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned you sit down with paper and pencil. It sounds like it sounds like that. My guess is that's better than trying to take notes on your phone or on a laptop or something like that. For sure. I think the moment, at least for me, if I have my phone around me, I'm going to take a look at it <laughs> and I'm going to get distracted by the incoming text messages or voicemails or other, other notifications that might pop up on my phone. So I really try, try to truly make this an airplane mode for myself, which means going completely analog. Uh, so no computer nearby, no phone nearby. It's just me and an old fashioned notebook and a pen. 
And, and it's amazing when you just start writing the, the types of insights that come up. And again, a lot of the, those insights are not usable, but I find that I often have to get rid of the junk in my brain for those more valuable insights to, to emerge to the surface. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to keep double clicking on this because um, I think this is interesting. So since our audience and our whole focus is, is around the business development aspect, meaning mm-hmm. Most of our clients are folks that have one foot in delivering some kind of really deep expertise, lawyer, consultant, account exec at a big healthcare company, things like that. But they've got one foot in growth. And the thing that's hardest, one of the things that's the very hardest is the delivery work just yanks these folks away all the time from the growth work. And that's because there's deadlines, there's people clamoring for answers, there's you know a gazillion emails every day. But if the person at the top of that pyramid, that senior partner, that account exec, if they're not focused on growth, nobody does it. That can can get kicked down the road day over day, week over week. So help me with this really specific problem. Let's say somebody has that exact struggle. They want to implement this idea. 20 minutes, Eames lounge chair, pen, pen and paper, nothing else. How do they get started? And how do they sort of steer the, the work that they're doing to focus on the growth activities? Yeah, I think I would recommend putting it on your calendar, uh, which is what I do, because and treat it like a meeting, right? You have to show up, and if someone asks you, you know, are you available at 9.30 a.m. on Wednesday when you have this 20 minutes of reflection scheduled, the answer is no. Uh, so you, And that's the way that I treat it. And I would also start small. You know, try it, this is an experiment for you. Try it for a week. Try just one day out of a week schedule. Everybody has 20 minutes they can find in a week, right? Try it and see see what happens. Um, I do like whenever you're implementing something new in, in your life, I love approaching it with the mindset of an experiment, right? So this is something new I haven't tried before. I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, I can try something else. So if sitting on a chair doesn't work for you, you can go for a run for 20 minutes and see if that is more helpful in terms of idea generation. Um, but starting small, putting on your on your calendar and approaching with an experimental mindset. And one more thing I'll mention, I think part of the reason why people shy away from doing something like this is that it doesn't have an immediate impact, right? With a deliverable, for example, you're dealing with real clients, they're asking you for things. So when you respond to their demands, it feels like progress and it feels like immediate progress. Whereas sitting on your chair for 20 minutes, you know, it's gonna generate some insights for sure, but those insights may not bear fruit for a long time. So I think being aware of that, just approaching it as an investment. This is a long-term investment you're making to be able to generate ideas now that are gonna turn into amazing opportunities a year or two years or three years down the road. So this is an investment in your future. I mean, the idea for Think Like a Rocket Scientist came to me in one of these, like we would not be having this conversation were it not for the 20 minute airplane mode. Uh, and yeah, it didn't have an immediate impact when I came up with, with the genesis of the book, but it blossomed into something that's been amazing for me, um, amazing for me down the road. So I think just recalibrating or balancing between short term demands and long-term vision is is also important in seeing the value of of setting this time aside. Well, I'm I'm sold. So I'm committing to you right now. The New Order Wordless Mix is coming out. It's coming back, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna go on more runs. Osan told me to clients, if I'm not available, it's not my fault. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love it. Well, hey, I know our audience is gonna want to take, we're gonna learn more about you. Take the next step with you. What's the best way to do that? The best way to t- keep in touch with me is through my email list. Uh, it's called The Weekly Contrarian. It's a short email that goes out every Thursday and it shares one big idea that you can read in three minutes or less. And you can sign up for that by heading over to weeklycontrarian.com. And when you sign up, you'll also get my free uh, ebook. It's called The Contrarian Handbook, Eight Principles for Innovating Your Thinking. 
Well, I love it. Well, I've signed up myself. I've loved getting the newsletter. So everybody else, you should do it too. It is well worth it. Weeklycontrarian.com. Thanks everybody. So, hey, tune in for our next episode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to recap everything I learned from Osan. I'm going to give the three biggest things I learned and apply those directly to your world of business development. Can't wait to do that. That's coming up next. Thanks, Osan. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom.